Okay, so a ton of you have asked me which drone is better for autonomously tracking motorcycles. The DJI Mavic series, specifically the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic Air 2, or the Skydio 2. So if you want the facts based on real world testing, then stick around for this video. And I will say that one of these guys crashed and burned no fault of my own and had to be completely replaced. So which one will it be? Let's dive in and get started. Welcome back Bikeaholics, Ryan Urlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com. Always thank you for checking back in. Okay, so there is a lot to talk about when it comes to flying drones. I could really get off track, I'm gonna try not to. I'll try to keep this video narrowly focused to autonomous motion tracking. We're specifically going to compare the Mavic series and the Skydio 2. So I know many of you on this channel may not care about this subject, but I guarantee a ton of you do from the amount of emails I get. Okay, briefly, I wanna give you just a little bit of my background. I have flown a plethora of drones over the past eight years as a filmmaker. If you wanna see some of my work, I will pop a card on the screen. I'll link to it in the description below. So I immediately became a Part 107 pilot when those regulations came out. I've been certified ever since. Additionally, uh, at my full-time paying job as a Leo, I am a unmanned aerial systems pilot and trainer. So I have a ton of flight hours and experience over the years, so I certainly hope that qualifies me to talk about my experiences and give my opinions. I understand that there's no perfect drone or tool when it comes to filmmaking or shooting videos. I always first choose full manual control of my drones when shooting videos or making films. That way I can frame things the way I want and get the exact shot I want. So unfortunately with autonomous flight, you're relying on all the auto camera settings, ISO aperture, shutter speed, not my favorite way to shoot. Additionally, like I say, you can't really frame it exactly how you want. You may get too much horizon, not enough horizon, too much subject. There are a few workarounds on that, on getting the height of the drone set before you go autonomous, but that just takes practice and it's not guaranteed. All right, I tell everybody the same thing. Don't go get a drone with autonomous features thinking that it's gonna be easy and you're gonna get cinematic shots. It just doesn't work that way. I urge everybody to go get a drone with manual flight controls. Learn how to fly that baby. Yes, get it in attitude mode if you can. Really learn to be a safe pilot, learn how to maneuver the aircraft. That's really how you're gonna get the most cinematic and creative shots. Then after that, you can move to the autonomous features and see if any of them work for your production. Okay, we're gonna to head to the field momentarily. I just wanna mention the cameras on the drones we're testing today. I'm not gonna dive in deep. They're very similar uh, for what these drones would be used for. Oh, and if you're gonna push yourself in manual flight mode to really get the most creative shots, probably gonna crash a time or two, so be prepared for that. All right, so I'm gonna gear up. We're gonna head out on the motorcycles for some real world tests. But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit, another biker joins a revolution. We would love to have you be part of it. And just a quick mention that this video is not sponsored in any way, and the drones I am using, I personally purchased. The opinions I give you are based on my personal experiences. Okay. So spotlight unavailable, we're recording in high frame rate. I'm in 4K 60, so let's move it down to 4K 30. Okay, 4K 30, should be able to highlight myself. Nonetheless, it's gonna trace me. Parallel would be more off to the side, so let's try trace first and see what happens here. Looks like it's coming there. Looks like it's still coming there. And it looks like it lost me. That's what I'm used to, unfortunately. Okay, so after about six attempts of tracing myself, I finally got it to target lock on me to give it another try. This game of tracing yourself just right has always been a serious problem with DJI Mavic drones. 
And I've learned that you sometimes have to just set up the shot and try over and over, sometimes up to 10 shots or so to get the drone to actually follow you for any length of time. When you finally do get it to follow you, it does okay, such as in this case you see here. It finally decided to do what DJI claims it can do and locked on me pretty good. Now it's following me here in normal mode, so you can see the drone is really topping out at about 16 miles an hour, even though I'm going faster than that. You have to go pretty slow for Mavic drones to track you in normal mode, and you can see it creeps up and then falls back. But this was an anomaly for a Mavic drone, and I was honestly very surprised and probably one of the longest best tracks I've ever had over the years. Then the Mavic did exactly what I'm used to and got a mind of its own suddenly. When I turned around, it decided to stop following me and then nearly crashed into the ground. So it did parallel there. It finally locked. That was like literally eight tries to get it to lock on me. So we are in normal mode and we're on parallel. See what happens here. Has it got us? I'm going slow to see if it'll grab me. Okay, it looks like it's grabbing me. So, and I'm at about 20 miles an hour, so I'm going to pick it up just a little bit. It's not really paralleling me like it's supposed to. It looks like it's catching up to me. I'm going to go slow and see if it'll, uh, see if it'll parallel me. It's right on me. I don't know what it's doing. Oh yeah, now it lost me a smaller target looks like it's got me parallel go okay so I'm just got starting slow so it can catch up with me so it is truly paralleling me now I'm up to about I don't know 15 miles an hour and it's already not liking that too much in normal mode we'll try this in a minute in sport mode see what happens so I'm at about, yeah, 15, 16 miles an hour trying to keep it with me. I'm gonna pick it up to about 20 and just see what happens. So I'm at about 20 now, and it's trying to follow me, but I'm definitely getting ahead of it. All right, we're in sport mode now, and obviously when you do that, there's no obstacle avoidance whatsoever. I have no idea what it's doing now. Okay, it's, oh my God. It just freaked out. All right sport mode definitely takes off quicker I'm gonna get right up to uh, about 20 here and then we'll pick it up from there I'm just letting it catch me so it's got me so I'm gonna start picking it up see what happens we're up to about 25 looks like it's behind me there up to about 28 and I have no idea where it is. Oh my goodness, it's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So I'm gonna get up to about 30 here. Yeah, it, it's going all over the place. I have no idea what it's doing. And it looks like it lost me. Sport mode trace. Looks like it's falling, so I'm gonna pick it up here. We're at about 20 like it's doing good let's get up to about 30 here and see what happens right. let's just go for it here and again we'll see what happens here because we're going to gain some elevation i don't know what it'll yeah see it just freaked out because we didn't stay flat. And then the vision... Oh! I think we crashed. Yeah. It landed hard here. This is what I'm talking about, guys. I don't know. May have to send this in. I have DJI care on it, so... 
That was clearly the drone's mistake. It landed for no reason. All right, I'm just connecting the beacon to my phone. Drone's on, we're getting booted up. Looks like it's connected. Connecting now, calibrating, everything is getting up and running, both the beacon and the phone. Just push the two Scadio buttons on the beacon and we should launch this thing. And it's automatically a hand launch, it's automatically gonna find me. You see that it did it by itself. So it's found me. And we're in uh, motion follow. So basically it needs to know, it doesn't know if it's behind me, in front of me, to the side, because it doesn't know which way I'm gonna move, so it needs to know that. So I can also drag this into position. I can hold the Skydio buttons, and I can drag and just move it, and we'll stop it. And then you can raise it up a little bit. I'm gonna move over just right about there. And then I've got plus and minus on the controller. You can follow in four different positions. I'm in the number three out of four for as far as how close it's gonna follow me here. There's two, it'll bring it back in. All right, so we'll just do three for right now, position three. We'll do a little bit closer later. And we'll start going here, see how this bad boy does again. This is follow from behind and I can change the different angles on the phone or the beacon. If I want to follow left back, left right, right front, we'll do some front stuff in a minute. But this is kind of the right back following me for now. Again, at the number three. All right. Looks like it's following me good here. I'm going to crank it here and get up and see how well it does. doing really good I'm up to 30 there get out on kind of the main gravel road here it looks like it's still with me really good so yeah it's doing well we'll crank it up here That's about 40 there. It's holding with me here. And that's 40. 45. Still with me. Now I can grab the uh, controller or my phone and we can just tap the left arrows and it should move right around me here. So again, I'm gonna turn around here. You can really flip the beacon kinda where you want it to go. So because I motion track, it's trying to get back in position here for me because I've got it on my left side. So let's do, uh, actually, I'm going to just get moving just a little bit again so it knows which way I'm going. So I'm going to put it directly in front of me now. Again, we're at, I'm going to put it back at the, it moved into the number two position as far as how far away from me. So I'm going to put it back at three directly in front and we'll get going here and see what it does here going, going backwards. And I'm actually going to move it out to the left. Just a little bit because there's some trees coming up backwards and we'll see how well it navigates around them. So I'm moving now at 40. It's kind of doing a profile because I got ahead of it a little bit, but it's it's trying to keep up. I'll slow down and give it a chance to keep up. It's the left front, so and it looks like it's gonna miss the trees there. 
so again I'll just move the arrows and we'll get a really cool shot moving around me here still in the motion follow mode so now it's out to the right side of me kind of a profile I'll move it to the right front for this here it's backing up there's a big pile there it's going over but it senses that I can see it was low and it moved right up because that pile was there Again, I'll just move it back around for fun there. Back to the left. All right, we're kind of back to where we were. I'm going to take you one more spot here. We'll go test kind of some elevation changes on some terrain. Just some very mild adventure riding here just to test this thing. All right, so let's move it. I'm going to get moving here and move it back in front of me so it's directly in front of me again. Again, that pile's coming up. About 30 here. crank on it there all right I'm gonna turn up this road it should get back in front of me here now that it knows I'm turning because it's supposed to be in front and there's a bunch of trees here I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it in yeah so it sensed all those trees it kind of went between them there so that's the number two right here this is the number two position as far as how far away from me it is so it's a lot closer and it should be directly, basically set to follow in front of me. You can see the curve in the road. It's, it's working on keeping me. It doesn't know which way I'm going, but it's figuring it out. Pretty amazing. All right, so I'm gonna move it around to the side here. There we go, and we'll move it behind me. Obviously got some pulls and wires coming up. It's out to my left rear, so I'm not too worried about them, but I do worry about wires because they're so thin. Pulls I'm not so concerned about, so I'm gonna head off over here. Number two, I'm gonna hit the positive on the beacon and get out just a little bit farther as far as how close it's following me here. So again, number three position distance away from me and then it's kind of just in the left profile position. So we're obviously dumping elevation here and it's doing really good, kind of following the contour. Okay, so we're going to gain some elevation. I'm going to, I do worry about these cables or uh, wires you'll see up there. I'm just hitting down, just dumping just a little bit of elevation on this thing. And I'm going to go out to the four position. This is as far as it will go. And I'm dumping some elevation there. All right, so this might be a good shot. So we're just kind of at a left profile shot and then it's at the farthest position away so it's gonna follow me here as we get up here looks like it's doing pretty good there we go and it went under those wires
Look at that. Amazing. I do want to mention that moving the Skydio 2 around you 360 degrees can be done with the beacon or just the phone, but the beacon makes it very easy and convenient for doing that. However, the main reason to have the beacon is for GPS tracking. The Skydio 2 will still track you with just a phone and no beacon, but it's image tracking only, which is all DJI Mavics rely on and fail often as you saw. When you see the blue line going around the subject being tracked with a Skydio, that's tracking the image that it's locked on. When it loses that image tracking, it switches to tracking in GPS mode using the beacon, so it doesn't even have to see you. And that's the magic and what sets Skydio well apart from DJI that are terrible at tracking via image only. I would definitely not get a Skydio 2 without purchasing the additional beacon. The Skydio also has 360 degree spatial awareness and obstacle avoidance and the Mavic series can't even compete in that category either. And everything you've seen in this video so far while riding my adventure motorcycle are the same results I got while motion tracking while riding my street motorcycles. Now, I wanted to put Skydio 2 to the ultimate test, so what better place than some mountain roads with lots of trees as obstacles? So, I rounded Oscar up and we headed into the mountains near where we live. Now, the DJI Mavic series drones can't even get off the bench for this sort of test, as they'd absolutely fail and crash based on my years of experience with them. Using the beacon in combination with my iPhone, I launched the Skydio 2, just like my prior tests. The Skydio locked on me as expected, but when I went to get on my bike, it suddenly got a mind of its own and went over me and into the forest dodging branches and trees. It was very strange and I had to take over manual control with my iPhone to get it back. I basically ascended the Skydio 2 very high above the trees to try and see it. And once I did, I brought it back to my location to try again. I got it locked on me, but it was having troubles figuring out which was front and which was rear. So I kept trying to force it to the rear with a beacon. And off we went and it did pretty good for a while. Then it got confused as we approached a bend in the road and it lost the track and froze in place. In reviewing the footage, I learned the Skydio hovered and then started flying around on its own, I assume looking for me. I came back to find the Skydio hovering in place and brought it back into position. And the second round was truly unbelievable. Check this out. I am still in awe of the capabilities of the Skydio 2 as it avoided all obstacles while still motion tracking. We went as fast as 30 miles per hour, but I had to monitor things. Oftentimes we had to slow to get the Skydio to catch back up, and at times, instead of just moving right or left, it decided to ascend way high and then come back down. Now I will note that some of the shots can be fairly jerky as the Skydio tries to navigate around obstacles and definitely not as smooth as if manually flying. But it's still just awesome, and there are definitely some usable shots. And after that test, we reached a lookout point, and I wanted to test some manual flying shots with the Skydio 2, and it's doable. It's just not nearly as fun or precise as flying a DJI Mavic manually.
So both drones have strengths and weaknesses. Both have a place in the toolbox. Let's first talk about the DJI Mavic series. So when it comes to manual flight, which I prefer, Skydio 2 is zero competition for DJI at this point. I just love how DJI aircraft fly. I love the controller, the way the sticks feel, how responsive that bird is. I can move it exactly how I want um, and fine tune it. Uh, to get the exact shots that I want. So when it comes to autonomous motion tracking and obstacle avoidance, DJI simply cannot compete with the Skydio 2. They're not even close. Skydio has stomped all over them in this category. It really should embarrass DJI a bit, seeing how they're supposed to be one of the industry leaders. Skydio 2's obstacle avoidance absolutely baffles me still. And uh, coming from DJI products, not trusting that, it's been a hard transition when I am flying the Skydio to actually let go a little bit and just trust that system and uh, it's spot on. Clearly Skydio's focus was on autonomous motion tracking and obstacle avoidance because they really lack in the manual flight modes. Uh, in fact, the controller even feels really cheap and almost like it was an afterthought. And the Skydio 2 drone in combination with the main controller really feels clunky and less than responsive. I'll explain. So as an example with a DJI drone in manual flight, say you want to pitch forward and you want to roll at the same time, you can really fine tune that on the sticks and move in really creative ways to get those great shots. In contrast, uh, I tried some of that with the Skydio, and uh, if you're trying to do two maneuvers at the same time, it's really hard to fine tune, and it either, the, the bird either wants to pitch forward or just roll instead of really doing them at the same time, so you're limited with that. So if Skydio can take their existing platform and build on that to add really precise and good manual flight controls in their next iteration, DJI should be really worried. 